My name is Billy Heaney. I'm a zoologist, filmmaker, keen paddleboarder, and all round water baby. This is unbelievable. And we welcome to the round table studio, Brendan Godley, Professor of Conservation Science at the University of Exeter. Billy Heaney with me here too, a zoologist and wildlife presenter. We do all of these to our advantage, as well as hoping to protect them for, for yep. their own sake as well. Yeah, and with this new technology, it's something that I touched on earlier. And uh, an interesting study that I thought was fantastic was to do with um, spoonbilled sandpipers. We had, they were nearly went extinct. They were down to a handful of individuals. But with technology, we were able to find out where they were going so that we can then protect those areas and basically save a species. We're joining zoologist and filmmaker Billy Heaney, who's on a mission to get a glimpse into their hidden lives. So the moment of truth. Let's see what I've managed to capture over the last four weeks. Pine martins are mustlids and are part of the weasel family, which also includes otters and badgers. The adults are about the size of a cat with a long bushy tail and are typically nocturnal. That is amazing. And here you can see how the kits are already starting to climb, albeit a tad on the clumsy side at times. This week, Billy, what have you brought in for us today? So this is the skull of a grey seal. Look at the size of that skull. They it's are enormous. enormous. When you're in the water with them, it's just crazy, isn't it? It's huge. Uh, so yes. It almost looks like a sort of calcified football boot. With um, a so stonking hooter. Skinny. Skinny. Isn't no. the Latin name for them something like oh. hook-nosed sea pig? You've nailed it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and you've <laughs> nicked my next line. Like, <laughs> not... <laughs> Badgers have actually been a part of my life for as long as I can remember, really. I went to school in a town called Broxbourne, and Broxbourne, the word itself, is derived from two Old English words, the first being brock for badger and the second burner for stream. So I quite literally went to school in a badger stream, yeah. and it was the logo of our school, and, you know, I saw a picture of a badger on a bin every morning walking to school. But I didn't actually see a live one until I was 18 at university, and it wasn't until last year that I started seeing them regularly, and this fixation and obsession with badgers yeah. actually really took hold. Now, with the badger group that you've been watching over the last couple of years, have you sort of noticed any characters, any individuals that sort of stand out more than the others? So we've got the Johnston Strait just right below us now. Prime habitat for a whole host of marine wildlife, and eagles and ravens, prime orca territory. So fingers crossed at some point we'll catch up with them. Look at that. There are currently over 3,600 whales, dolphins and porpoises in captivity worldwide. Bored, stressed and depressed, captive whales and dolphins suffer both physically and mentally. They are inherently social creatures and like us, their mental health deteriorates when they're denied social contact with other individuals. Rot Nest is home to eight to 12,000 of these curious little quackers. Now, like most macropods, they feed on a variety of different grasses and leaves. And uh, here on the island, their only natural predator is snakes. Hence why they're really, really curious. These guys are mega herbivores and they don't stop eating and they can actually eat over 150 kilos of vegetation every day. That's like two of me. Just coming up is a field full of barnacle geese. So I'm just going to undo my window, turn the engine off, and hopefully we'll be able to hear them all. Talk to me, goose. So with a wingspan of 1.8 metres and a body length of around a metre, the gannet is Europe's largest seabird. Now, Scotland is home to 60% of the European gannet population, and each year between February and October, about 150,000 birds come here to Bass Rock to breed, making it the largest northern gannet colony in the world. Now, when they're traveling out at sea, gannets will fly close to the waves, gliding above the water. But when they're hunting, they'll fly up high, begin circling, and then they'll perform nature's greatest high dive, plummeting into the water, reaching speeds of 60 miles an hour. How awesome is that? It's absolutely balmy. The more you sing, the more they come in. A particular favourite of the, of the dusky dolphin is Africa by Toto. They love a good melody. Now, reproductive females will return to those beaches every two to three years, and in one season, they will have three clutches, each contain around 100 eggs. And now, thanks to 26 years of some fantastic conservation work from the Marine Turtle Conservation Project, the number of green turtles in northern Cyprus is on the rise. 
<laughs> Billy, welcome back. Billy? Yes? I need to know this. Have you spent a considerable amount of time trying to communicate with seals? This is a really interesting piece of science that's just come out. Ben Burville did it up in the Farne Islands. Islands yeah. And the grey seals have been clapping underwater. And there's a couple of theories going around why it's particularly the males that are doing it. So that could be to say, back off, this is my patch, or it could be, come over here, kind of thing. Yeah. Or, or could it be really they're just impressive. happy and they know it? Or if you're happy and you know it. 